Hi, welcome to the PACET JavaScript Learning Series. I'm Marty Baker. In this video, you will learn about the different types of errors that can take place with JavaScript, syntax versus runtime errors. I'll talk about the try, catch, and finally structures and the capabilities of JavaScript for runtime errors, which allow your code to fail gracefully. We'll look at the try, catch, finally process, how your browser works with this structure. In the example code, we'll look at syntax of the try, catch, and finally structure, and we'll write some code that shows you how it works. We'll talk about what you should know after you've watched this video, the key takeaways from this video. I'll give you some other resources to learn more about try, catch, and finally. And in the last part, I'll give you your next steps, what you should be able to do after this video. There are two basic types of errors that you'll run into when working with JavaScript. These are syntax errors and runtime errors. Syntax errors are found when you are testing and debugging your code. The most common causes of syntax errors are case sensitivity and spelling of keywords and variables. The second type of error that you'll come across is a runtime error. Perhaps I should define runtime for those of you that are new to programming. Runtime is simply the time when your program or script is running. Errors found at runtime are harder to work with than syntax errors. Runtime errors can not only be caused by programming errors, but can be caused by user interaction. Use the try, catch, finally structure to handle runtime errors in JavaScript. When an error occurs during runtime, it's called an exception. An exception can occur for a variety of reasons. When writing JavaScript, you should wrap statements that can possibly cause exceptions in your try block. If an exception takes place, JavaScript will immediately start to execute the catch block. Okay, it's time to take a look at some code, starting with the basic syntax of declaring try, catch, and finally. So basically, it starts with a try. And you put in a curly brace to open it and a curly brace to close the try. All your code that you want to try belongs within those curly braces. Then the catch statement, along with your exception parameter, where you'll be receiving your exception object. And again, a curly brace to start it, a curly brace to close it, and all your code for your catch belongs between those two. And then your finally statement. And your finally clause will always execute. Okay, let's expand on the syntax here of the try, the catch, and the finally and we're going to add some example code. So we're going to do a document dot write and I'm going to ask it to write out a variable called int age. Now if you look at this code you know that that's already an error so it will throw the exception down to our catch and stop all the processing. So we're going to say that there will be a runtime error so the next line of code should not show. And I'm going to do another document.write and I'm going to say oh you're getting old but this will not write to the page. Okay, so we should never see that because as soon as it hits an age, the exception is thrown because of that error and goes down to the catch, passes the exception down to the catch. So now we want to handle that exception. And our exception is an object, so we can get some information from that object, some of the properties, and it'll help us determine what that error is. So I'm going to do document.write again. And I'm going to write the error that happened 
and I'm going to ask for our exception object and the air. And so we can read this nicely. I'm also going to put in a line break. Okay, and the next one we're going to look at is the message. What message will our exception object give us? Oops, I spelled air wrong above, so I'm going to go up and correct that. The message, and we're going to add our exception object and message. Plus, let's put in that extra line break again so everything looks nicely. And the last one we're going to look at is called the stack. And the stack gives us lots of good information. It's going to tell us what line of our code it fa failed on. I love the stack. And again, let's put in a line break. So our final code, like I said before, always executes. It doesn't matter if the try goes fine and, and the catch doesn't run, finally will always run. in the finally clause. And outside I'm going to put a break in that too. And outside I'm going to put in a document.write this line of code will be seen on the web page. And that will show because it's outside of our try catch finally. Okay, so I'm going to save that and run it in Firefox. And you'll see that the error that happened is it's undefined. The message is int age is not defined. And the stack information gives me the file, the name of my HTML file, and right here, line 15 is where it's saying the error is. Okay, this will always run because it's in the finally clause, and this line of code will be seen on the page. So let's go back and look at line 15. And sure enough, there's line 15, our document.write in age. I'll show you that what happens if in age var int age equals 39, and we add that, we're no longer going to get any of our catchphrases, any of the code and catch, but we will see you're getting old, but this will not write on the page. This time it will write. And this will no longer write. Our finally will still write because it is guaranteed to write, always. And we will see this line of code will be seen on the page because it's outside of the try, catch, and finally statement. So I'm going to go back to my page, refresh, and 39, you're getting old. This will write to the page. This will always write to the page. It's in the finally clause. So what should you know after watching this video? You should know how to write a try, catch, finally structure within your document. You should know how to wrap code that needs to be tested to see if it runs. You need to know how to display important information about the exception object within the catch block of the code, and how to finish your try, catch, and finally structure using the finally clause. Your key takeaways, what information you need to think about. Try, catch, and finally is a way of gracefully failing. So professionally use the heck out of try, catch, and finally. Give enough information to yourself so you can track the error. And remember the finally clause will execute, guaranteed. 
Where can you place your try, catch, and finally code? Well, you can put it anywhere in your JavaScript that you need to know if the code has failed or is working. The try, catch, and finally should be used in your code where the user can cause a runtime error. Where if they're putting input and they need to be putting a number and they're putting an alpha, you can go ahead and use a try, catch, and finally to see what they've done. As always, test your code. Test your code in the major browsers, Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, and Opera. Other resources for your learning. Um, the CIW Certification Partners, Electronic Materials, don't forget those. Books 24-7 um, from the library. Practical JavaScript, DOM scripting, and AJAC projects. Chapter 2, When Life Gives You Grapes, Make Wine, Air Handling. Uh, professional JavaScript for Web Developers, the 3rd edition, Chapter 17, Air Handling. And here are some links. If you need to look, you can look at the Mozilla Developers Network, and there's the URL for that. W3 Schools, Throw and Try to Catch. Um, JavaScript.com, Handling Runtime Errors. And, oh, I have the Mozilla Network in there twice. Well, why not? They're so good. Mozilla Developers Network, Try, Catch, Statement, and a different page reference. So those are some resources for you. Some of your next steps. Copy the code provided for you immediately below this video. Run it to see if that it works for you. If you feel you have a good understanding of the try catch finally, here's a challenge for you. Create a web page that asks the user for two numbers to divide. Use the try catch finally structure to prevent division by zero, which we know is undefined from our math studies. And as always, if you need any additional help, be sure to ask your instructor or mentor for that help. Thank you for watching this video in the JavaScript learning series.